Hi, this is Ian from His Amazing Glory Ministries in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, the season of harvest that I believe that we're coming into in the earth. And this season of harvest is going to be a sustained season, a season that um, is going to see great signs and wonders and miracles, but also a season uh, of harvest in the area of unrighteousness, I guess. And so the two harvests are coming together together. And so it's going to be easy to focus on the negative side of things, if you like, the darkness that covers the earth. But we've got to remind ourselves that in the book of Isaiah it says, though great darkness cover the earth, uh, you know, that your light has come. And our light, of course, is Jesus. And in this season that we're in, which is in between uh, blood moons uh, at the feasts of Israel, the feast of um, uh, Passover, Pesach, and the Feast of Sukkot, uh, both last year and this year, all have a blood-red moon, which uh, is mathematically impossible to produce, unless, of course, you're the one who formed the sum in the first place, or the mathematical puzzle in the first place, and we know that the creator of the universe uh, has placed in the sky the sun, the moon, the stars, and all, all the you know heavenly bodies, as times, clocks, and seasonal timepieces. And so um, Jesus himself said in Matthew that, you know, the moon shall be turned to blood and the sun uh, shall be darkened uh, in that great day of the Lord. But it also he also says that, which most people ignore, when you see these things happening, look up because your redemption draws near. I'm really excited. I mean about what God is about to do in the earth. It's a, a signal of great harvest. Just um, NASA have done some research into previous blood moons. 1492 was the same sequence of blood moons. And in that sequence, um, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain uh, had the Inquisition against the Jews on the negative side. But on the positive side... Christopher Columbus sailed and discovered in 1492 the New World, which has been a haven and a home and a place of protection for Jews for many centuries now. The next one was like 47, 48. Uh, in that period, that's when Israel was declared uh, by the United Nations that they could become a nation. In 1948, they became a nation. And so in that period, in that sequence of blood moons there was a negative because the uh, Arab nations on all sides of them declared uh, war against Israel and so the negative was uh, there was war but the positive was Israel became a nation after thousands of years they were an independent nation in their own land the next period was um, 1967 1967 was a six-day war, so the negative is that, again, Israel was attacked on all sides by its Arab neighbors, but the positive is that um, they gained Jerusalem. Uh, when Israel was formed as a nation, Jerusalem, most of Jerusalem wasn't even part of uh, or given to Israel, but in 1967 they took possession of Jerusalem. And so, um, so the negative was war, the positive was Jerusalem came into the hands of Israel. So here we are entering another period now of these blood red moons. So um, I believe it signals what Jesus said, when you see these things happening, look up because your redemption draws near. Redemption for the people of Israel and redemption for the Gentile nations. Uh, I've got great hope that even though darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people, that behold, a light will arise. And that light we know is Yeshua, Jesus. So in the lead up to this, there's been several, in the lead up to this harvest, there's been several things happening. One of them is a transition or a restructuring so that whatever is about to happen can, uh, you know, the foundation will be able to hold the great glory that's coming to the earth. Because uh, the church as it was, or the structure as it was, or is in many cases, is just not strong enough to hold the glory 
that foundation is too weak to hold the glory. Our foundation needs to be Christ himself. So there's been great restructure where the kingdom of God has been proclaimed all over the earth. Jesus himself said when you, um, it says, uh, you know, this gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of salvation, this gospel of the kingdom shall preach in Judea and Samaria, even unto the ends of the earth. Well, I've got good news for you. I come from New Zealand. And so New Zealand is as far away from Jerusalem as you can get. So the good news is that I'm preaching, many others are preaching, the gospel of the kingdom in New Zealand. So the ends of the earth have heard, which means that we're living in a season where uh, there's restructuring for a greater glory, for a great harvest that's coming. Um, one of the things about this harvest, number two, is that there will be like recto, um, you know, blessings coming upon the body of Christ that you didn't sow for, but many who have gone before have sown in blood and in tears. Many who have gone before have sown with their own lives, uh, and we're about to reap the blessings that are about to overtake the earth, the blessings of salvation in Yeshua, the blessing of Jesus revealed in his sons, the blessing of a revelation of the sons of God. Uh, you didn't sow into this, but the, as it says in the book of Hebrews, many of these saints in Hebrews 11 looked in uh, for the time that you're currently living in and they desired to be where you are. And so now they're cheering you on in heaven. They're cheering you on because you're about to enter into a time of reaping that um, you never sowed for. So just get ready for a, a time of reaping that you didn't sow for. I want to tell you that it's a bumper crop. You will reap uh, where you have not sown. Jesus himself said you'll reap where you haven't sown. Uh, we're entering into a season of jubilee, a jubilee of souls, where the sons of God are about to be revealed in the earth, where the sons of God are going to be brought forth, and the goodness of God is going to be seen on the earth. Yes, there will be darkness, and yes, there could be war, and yes, there are many things that would make us think that we're living in the end times, which we are, I believe that. But in the end times, there's also a great harvest, a great harvest where it is so big that God sends the angels to harvest with us, according to the word. There'll be a harvest of tares and a harvest of wheat. The wheat, of course, are the sons of the kingdom. The wheat is the fruit of the kingdom. The wheat is the, the goodness of God being revealed on the earth. And the tears are the things that have grown up alongside. Jesus said, don't pull the tears out, uh, but harvest them all together. And then I will sort out the wheat and the tears. Here's the good news. The good news is that the gospel of the kingdom is coming in power that you've never seen before. If is coming in glory that you've never seen before. It's coming in a revelation of the sons of God that you have never seen before. This is a season of harvest. This is a season of the harvest of the kingdom of God. This is a season where God is having a dominion surge, a push, if you like, in the earth to bring forth his name so that Jesus receives the reward of his suffering. Jesus didn't die just um, just to gain nothing. He died to gain an inheritance. And the good news for you today is that you're his inheritance. And I'm calling you into this inheritance. I'm calling you into this season of harvest, this declaration of the goodness of God in the earth, in the midst of gross darkness, in the midst of the dark that surrounds the earth. I, along with Jesus and many others, Jesus, of course, being the king, we're echoing his voice, saying, come, come to the supper table, come to the harvest, come and experience what it looks like to be true sons of God. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Ian from His Amazing Glory Ministries, and it's been my privilege to spend some time with you today. Remember, you're coming into a season of sustained harvest. God bless you. Amen.